We're going to talk about a zoo with a rich past and an exciting future when we come back. Welcome to Western New York Tonight. My name is Tom Christie. Tonight we're going to talk about the Oppenheim Zoo in the town of Wheatfield, I believe. And we're here with two town board, or two Oppenheim Zoo board members. Connie Lazinski, past president of the zoo, I believe. Yes. And Darlena Callahan, board member. Board member. Welcome. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Connie, you served as president for how long, when, what periods? Uh, about four years from 93 to 97. Okay. Uh, during the uh, completion of the lake, which I'm sure we'll get into in a little bit. Um, I began on the board back in 1988, unfortunately right at the time uh, the board decided to um, close down its business, at least for the display of animals. Uh, the board's been very active since this time. Were you actually on the board for that vote? Was it yes. one of your first? Wow. Yes, it was Tough one of the first. Uh, I began and then unfortunately the decision was made shortly after that to close the zoo down. Uh, Back in 88, we were plagued with some problems, a, a couple things. Uh, the major problem was poor drainage. Uh, we feel there's a very clay, the soils are clay, and, and the drainage is, is notoriously poor out there. And the zoo especially was hard hit with all the uh, farmland uh, around. And uh, if you can recall, we were getting some very bad publicity, muddy animals, uh, you know, they would, tourists would come by and see muddy animals, and, and it really wasn't good for the animals to be in that condition. Nor but again, what, nothing unhealthy no, for the animals, just mud. No. The, when the uh, USDA inspector came and looked at our zoo for our inspection, the animals were well fed, uh, they were healthy, uh, they were just muddy. And, and that wasn't, as you and I wouldn't like to, to be muddy or dirty. We like to take baths. So it was really hard for the animals. We also had a problem with poor fencing. And this not only posed a problem for animals which may escape, and also uh, for the kids, the local kids around the area, or tourists or visitors to the zoo, uh, that would leave holes for them to, to torment the animals or torture the zoo. And the animals really didn't feel secure, which isn't a good situation when animals are put in capacity. So at the time, the board weighed the decision, well, we could have taken uh, funds that were available and band-aid uh, the, the problem, mended the fences, uh, dug some trenches to, to try to help with the drainage problem. But again, that really wouldn't address long-term solutions for the zoo. Uh, the zoo at the time did not have a, a major uh, capital uh, plan or capital expansion plan. So at that point, in order to do our benefactor proud, we thought the best thing would do is to really take a long look back, look at what needed to, to be done to build a first-class zoo in the area. Right. Now, you mentioned the benefactor. <clears throat> Max Oppenheim. Yes. So Oppenheim. Max Oppenheim was a local realtor who had always had an interest in zoos, and it was his dream to have a zoo on this farmland that he had owned uh, in, in the town of Wheatfield. Uh, the the zoo itself is, is immediately adjacent to, and a lot of people think it's part of the Oppenheim Park, which is owned by Niagara County. Uh, Max Oppenheim, I do believe, donated some of that land for Niagara County for park purposes, and I know for a fact we, in self, we ourselves, as the zoo board, gave in the past uh, surplus land to the county for their park that we didn't need. Uh, for our zoo proper. Right. And so Max Oppenheim mm -hmm. had this dream to open a zoo. Yes. And it was and in the he, 40s? He... In the 40s, uh, and then he initially funded it, and he also left a, a, a very generous trust for us to keep the, the zoo going uh, after his death. Uh, it has been going for some years, uh, but again, uh, the original zoo as conceived uh, was, could not continued to exist. Uh, some of the things we never charged admission. Without any admission, 
uh, and without major benefactors other than the trust, although quite generous, you know, with these days and times, how much things cost it, just wasn't enough to keep the zoo going. It was in his original plan to, to never charge an admission. Yes, to not charge or to keep it affordable, which is something that we've kept near and dear in, in the plans for the new zoo, how we can, one, meet the, uh, the needs of the zoo, make it a very attractive uh, place for, for tourism and, and local residents alike, create a first-class educational and conservation uh, facility, uh, but also have uh, bring enough money in where we can uh, set a, a good capital plan and make sure that the animals are maintained uh, to the best of our capabilities. So it did actually exist for some 40 years before the... Yes, up until 1988 the zoo existed and, uh, and one thing that, that we've really been driven over these past few years by is that the nostalgia and the very fond memories that the residents of the area have for the Oppenheim Zoo. It wasn't an elaborate zoo, but it was a zoo that was easily accessible accessible, it was very family friendly, the kids could come in and pet and I, I, I don't think there's any one of us, or at least who have been to the zoo, don't remember putting the quarter in the slot and being feed able to the feed the, the, the deer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now Darlene, you've been on the board since when? Well, just a few years. I was first introduced to the board when I was a, a Wheatfield Town board member, okay. a sort, sort of liaison to the board. Okay, and um, so the board, important to know that the, when the zoo voluntarily closed in 1980. Mm -hmm. The board did not go out of business and uh, it really closed with the anticipation of planning for the future, right? Yes. That mm -hmm. In the past, just a little background, um, when the uh, prior to the zoo closing there had been some preliminary studies done by the Niagara County Community College as well as the University of Buffalo in conjunction with the tourism uh, potential of the zoo area and, and Route 62 in general. So we did build up on some of those initial studies that were already done and saw the tremendous tourism uh, potential for a zoo on that site. Right. I, I guess we should say, we're, maybe we're neglecting a few things. Mm -hmm. It's right on Route 62, which mm -hmm. is Niagara Falls Boulevard? Yes, Niagara yeah. Falls Boulevard, right on Route 62. And at that time, uh, being one of the main thoroughfares into the city outside of the thruway, the tourism potential was, was, uh, was tremendous. But even now, with the growth of Amherst and the growth of Wheatfield, uh, as both as a residential and business uh, area, it, it's even tenfold now. Right. Well, I know we read, uh, I think, back, back in March, where uh, there was some talk between Erie and Niagara counties merging a zoo, and uh, Niagara County had more land to offer, that kind of thing. Um, they came out with a lot of statistics about the population, where mm -hmm. the tourism dollars are spent. You know, it was a very nice package they came out with. Um, and, and I understand that I mean, they've been open to the Oppenheim Zoo now as well since that. Yes, I, I mean, that's driven home. At one, uh, John Simon, the executive uh, director of the uh, Niagara County Industrial Development Agency, made us aware, and actually came to light, especially with the Buffalo Zoo proposal, made us aware that there, uh, that zoo projects could be an appropriate uh, uh, project for consideration for industrial development uh, revenue bonds, uh, and that would give us a, a source of funding that we hadn't anticipated or really hadn't thought about prior to this time. Uh, in the past, uh, as many uh, were not-for-profit agency and uh, as many other not-for-profits in this area know or, or have come to realize that the big corporate donations as uh, were there in the past are not necessarily there right now, uh, the big dollars, when all the industrial plants and the concerns and the workers and the peoples, just, I mean, surely by the, the loss of population in the Niagara Falls, Niagara County area, the money isn't there for donations. Um, so that's something that the board has had to look at to explore different avenues uh, to fund the zoo to actually get it built. Um, we did uh, construct a Maybe I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but they're now um, we're nearly completing phase one of our rebuilding project. The first thing we had to do is uh, fix the drainage problem. Right, it was closed because was, of drainage and fencing. You couldn't do a thing until drainage was taken care of, and that was given. We did a drainage study, and we came up with the plan to build a retention lake. And to do this, we had to lease land from Niagara County, which we had previously donated to them. So it was a it was a. a, a, a private uh, public partnership with Niagara County to build a four and a half acre lake 
uh, eight or nine feet deep in most spots. Right. Uh, you, we, there's a brochure that you guys yes, have that, yes. you, that you've done mm -hmm. before, and, and in there, there's the master plan section. And uh, I don't know if we can get this on the screen, but I mean, yes. there's the, the zoo over here yes. and the lake, and the lake is done. The lake, the lake is lake done. Is uh, four and a half acres, and it has solved the, the drainage problem, um, at least for the zoo property. The 66,000 cubic yards of uh, clay uh, were taken out of the lake in the excavation, and that clay was used to put on the zoo property just to the uh, to the left of, of, of your picture to, one, raise our elevation of our property three feet in all areas, and plus, as you can see right now, it, it's labeled Northeast Forest, but we've actually moved our mountain area to that uh, area, to start building our mountains for our, uh, our mountain lion exhibits, our mountain goats, uh, and, uh, our mountain goats and, and other of the, the higher tundra and the mountainous regions. Right. So all the clay and the, the soils that were taken out of the Oppenheim Lake site were actually used to elevate our property, build the mountains, and give us a good start on the project of uh, our new zoo. Is it like 10 feet deep, 12 feet deep, something like that? Uh, I believe it's more or less eight or nine uh, over something four and a half acres. And, and one thing also, and one I, I guess I would be remiss if I didn't, um, you know, from the bottom of our hearts, uh, thank the operating engineers who donated four years of time to the excavation of this lake. Right, that was uh, a huge volunteer effort, right? That was a huge labor effort that we just couldn't have got it done without them. And, and again, uh, there's, if you ever in the area, we dedicated uh, a rock with a plaque. Actually, the rock was pulled out of the, the lake area <laughs> also uh, to dedicate the lake to the operating engineers right. uh, for, their, for their work. And, and along with, you know, I don't want to leave anyone out, but they really did a yeoman's job in helping us complete right. it complete that part of the project so I, I don't yeah I don't think people have the the concept of when you when you when you voluntarily pulled back in 1980 and said okay let's do this right and come up with mm -hmm. plans you had a little bit of a drainage problem where animals were getting muddy the result is a four and a half acre lake uh, where all this water runs into I mean it, that wouldn't well, stopped I, I mean generally it's a huge fishy stop. people and fishing that, there on that, the that's or? another we, the, we've uh, with the help of the state we've stocked it with fish and it's a nice fishing experience it not only helps our zoo project with the drainage it also is a nice complement on a recreational and aesthetic basis to Oppenheim Park uh, if you can appreciate the logistics and everyone says well why is this taking so much time why don't we see the zoo built it took us well over four years to construct that lake we're working with volunteer help, volunteer equipment at times, uh, volunteer labor, and then the cooperation of the weather. When everyone think, oh, the weather's nice outside, let's go dig. Well, that actually is the, one of the worst times to dig because of the, the drainage in the water table in that particular area. Once you start digging down a few feet, all of a sudden you're into muck and gumbo, and frankly, I learned more about <laughs> excavation than I, I gumbo, don't think The gumbo, is that I, technical I, engineering yes, term? It's the, it gumbo, is, uh, the gumbo, everything that you need to know in a lifetime. <laughs> and I don't know if you remember, there are times where backhoes in, in other areas of wheat field on another lake project were being buried in quicksand. It's mm -hmm. just, was not a pleasant thing. So uh, construction, and a lot for uh, a lot of the time, at least the excavation of the lake had to be do done in the winter when the land was frozen so they mm -hmm. could at least have some solid mass to, t to take away. In the meantime also, uh, we had another local construction company uh, help us with the demolition of all the old existing uh, structures um, and uh, the, uh, the leveling uh, of the land in, in the zoo. We're getting there. Well, I know this as you drive by uh, again on Niagara Falls Boulevard. There's a sign that says Phase One with some check marks. Yes. And mm -hmm. What is? What are those three check marks? I think I see that. The I've seen the two are done. Was the master plan, which has been which developed, is, and we are down to 40 percent design detail for the master plan uh, for the the entire lake projects. All of the individual exhibits have been delineated, um, and. Uh, the infrastructure plans have been uh, completed. Uh, part two was uh, the, lake the lake and completion of the lake, and that we've, we've actually done. And uh, part three of phase one is uh, infrastructure. the infrastructure, just mm -hmm. laying down. We're going to have all underground utilities, including cable, phone, water, sewer. And, and if you may or may not be uh, 
rare, we need to even put in like a mini septic system for the animal and the animal waste. I mean, mm -hmm. there's a lot of, uh, lot of uh, technical things, scientific things, environmental concerns that all have to be addressed in, when you're building a zoo. Plus the fact that we also front a creek and, and right. certain runoff may go into the creek, that needs to be addressed also. So there are a lot of different concerns uh, uh, you know, in the actual construction, right. the infrastructure needs. Well, let's take a zoo. quick break, and when we come back, we'll talk more about the building of the new zoo. We'll be right back on Western New York tonight. On the big highway of life, there's only one safe place for kids. Backseat, baby. The front seat's not the place to drop out. Backseat, baby. You don't want that big old bag to pop out. Backseat, baby. Put that booties in the backseat. Backseat, baby. Have that some kids you never meet. I'm here to remind you to put them behind you. Backseat, baby. Ow! Look at him. Backseat, baby. To stay alive even when I drive. When the heavens thunder, when the nation calls, Come on. you can make a difference and be a part of it all. Find yourself in the Army National Guard, serving one weekend a month and two weeks a year, and you'll find an extra paycheck, money for college, and all the adventure you can handle. Call 1-800-GO-GUARD. In the Army National Guard, you can... <laughs> Who are you? See more smoke. Smoke detector. <laughs> and I see more smoke coming from that toaster. <gasps> Thanks for warning us, Seymour. I hate smoke. <laughs> so whenever I see it, I make this noise to warn you. Because where there's smoke, there may be fire. Be cool about fire safety. Be cool. We're here tonight talking about the Oppenheim Zoo. We just finished talking about the old Oppenheim Zoo. Let's talk about the new Oppenheim Zoo. Connie, Connie Lazinski, Darlene O'Callaghan, thanks for coming, board members. Um, we just talked uh, before the break about this phase one and getting that third check mark up on that sign on the, on the road. And there's so, many, so much to do to build a physical zoo, just like taking care of drainage was now a lake. I what are the quickly what are the next phases that would As need to the, happen the infrastructure needs to be in place because before we build mountains we don't want to have to tunnel through mountains and underneath we'd like to get all that in place and also having the infrastructure in place will make it much more attractive for corporations to sponsor sites and and, and exhibits uh, our second phase we plan to bring the master plan from 40 percent design detail to a full 100 percent design detail we also want to prepare bid specs and uh, start to market the different exhibits uh, at the zoo for, for corporations or for any other entity which like who would uh, like to get involved. We'd also like to look at some type of a phasing uh, process, although we're, we're subject to the same regulations, whether we have one animal or ten, uh, we'd like to, if certain areas of the zoo can be built easily uh, and just to generate interest and stir up excitement. We'd like to identify those, get those built, and then let the thing snowball from there. Um, our last phase, uh, phase three, is which it will be the actual construction of the exhibits and uh, getting everything else in place. Is like the last check, check mark on phase three, the last phase, bring in animals? That's the last? Yes. yes. And uh, for those who, of you who aren't aware, when we did close down the zoo, some of our animals were sold, some were rehabilitated back into the wild, and some were uh, given back, we had some farm animals were given back to the farmers. Uh, one of our bison is still alive and well. I was bison just going to ask, do we have a 1988 animal that we could yes. bring back for the yes, opening? Yes, we do have uh, Willie the bison, and that was a uh, big, huge bison. I've been told he's doing very well on the bison farm uh, down in Ellicottville. Actually, he's gained 100 pounds since he's been down there. That's so, an interesting sideline. So we would like to bring Willie back. Uh, he's our uh, signature. That could be a fundraising idea. Bring Willie back. Yes. Well, anyway, Darlene, I know something you, that, that you've been involved in uh, with the zoo has been something that doesn't even appear on the phase chart necessarily, but kind of leaps forward 
also because zoos are educational in nature uh, and that's the internet site maybe the virtual zoo the virtual zoo project um, this is sort of a, a two-faced thing. The, the Virtual Zoo Project was an idea just to, first of all, get our name out there once again. Uh, my children remember the Oppenheim Zoo. We went there often, and now all of our children are on the Internet. It's a great way to reintroduce them to the zoo, and we do have our site started. And uh, I'm going to kind of jump into the grant. We did apply for a grant from the Niagara Counter County Environmental Fund, and we did receive the grant. And this grant is going to help us continue our, our zoo site. Um, I should give the, the Oppenheim Zoo site address. Sure. It's at www.oppenheimzoo.org. We also have our email up and running, which is info at oppenheimzoo.org. And uh, the idea of the grant is an educational tool. Uh, this is what the grant was for. Uh, educational thing. I guess part of what we want to do is use this as a way to get into the school systems and help the school children in the curriculum actually help us build our virtual zoo right. on, on the web. And, and I think, yeah, I, I don't know if we mentioned that one of the unique parts of the zoo seems to be that it's just going to be indigenous animals. You're not going to see a polar bear here if a polar bear didn't live here at some point. Right. Mm -hmm. the, the four areas that we have is the tundra, our northeast forest, the plains and grasslands are three areas. Uh, we'll have a birdhouse and a farm animal play area as the old zoo had. Um, but yeah, there would be animals that would be familiar to children raised in the northeast, obviously. Right. But um, not necessarily boring either. They'd still be no. some pretty wild animals. There may be animals that no longer mm -hmm. exist in this area that the, these children it would be something new and exciting for them to research. There's so many areas that this research project could go into. You can take, and I talked to you about this before, something as simple to, as a white-tailed deer, mm -hmm. which everyone thinks they know about. Uh, does the white-tailed deer from this area have a, a predecessor? What did the predecessor eat? What did it look like? What kind of plants existed then that don't exist now? this research project starting with the smallest detail could could just go on forever uh, cataloging animals and plants uh, native to this area from however far back you want to research up to the present I think there is or at least no one has found a, a complete census of plants and animals no I believe there isn't and 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 the um, <coughs> The departments over at, I believe, Niagara County Community College would like to see such a thing done. And we had discussed before the ways that this educational tool could be used even to having uh, people in the animal uh, programs at the college sort of mentor the high school and perhaps junior high school aged uh, students into building some sort of census into a really major project uh, that would perhaps be housed at the college. Right. At the college level, right? But this can this can start with grade school. This could start with uh, youth organizations in the area, Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, right. uh, can start the research and and uh, carry it on. And this is something that can be in in the curriculum year after year after year after year, and never run out of material. Right. And these children will be helping us with the information that'll go into our website. Right. So they'll have an ownership stake. An ownership. The children, the the schools, the college, the the community at large will have an ownership of this. Right. So you'll have the physical zoo where the animals are housed, mm -hmm. but the virtual zoo, so to speak, will be could be immense, immense with information. And, and constantly changing. The place to uh, go. New information constantly <laughs> added uh, as, as our research projects develop. Yes, the website, uh, it could expand forever. The research projects could go on forever. Right. Now, uh, you mentioned the, the northwest forest and the tundra mm -hmm. and the northeast forest and such. Um, you know, how are those kind of determined in the Vista building? Uh, what kind of animals have been from here? Do we, do well, we know what, what we know what wasn't here? Uh, well, I'm, I'm not sure I can tell you what was and wasn't here. Uh, for instance, in the plains and grasslands, everybody knows coyotes. Those are definitely here. Mm -hmm. uh, those are definitely here. Uh, the bison would be from the grasslands. Um, uh, I'm, help me out here. Prairie dogs. The prairie, dogs. prairie dogs. There we go. Yeah. Yeah, one, of, one of the things we looked at, too, there's this silly little animal called the burring owl mm -hmm. okay. that we also, and similar to what the Buffalo Zoo did just this past summer about where you actually take part in what the animal does. If the animal burrows, the people would be directed to at least walk down and go through a tunnel. Okay. So you not only experience you know, the, the animal, uh, but you're actually taking the role of the animal on. Right. One of the things mentioned, one of the reasons why we chose to um, stick with just North America, one is the rarity of North American zoos in North America that just strictly specialize, if you will, in North American uh, animals and fauna. Uh, the other reason was uh, to keep our costs down. 
uh, North America, especially animals living on our uh, in our climate. Uh, we wouldn't have to have any exotic heating costs or exotic feed costs. Uh, we do have um, fairly harsh winters uh, at times, and this way we would be assured that the animals would be comfortable and, and basically in their own uh, in their in their own environment. Right. One of the things I know I, w I visited the website before the show is the misconception I had about zoos that they should be Sea World or you know mm -hmm. 200 acres, and that if you look at all the zoos under the AZA American Zoo, whatever the A is, American Zoological mm -hmm. and Aquarium Society, I mm -hmm. think is that there are many of them that are 15 yes. acres or yes. in fact the buffalo zoo to compare i believe is like 23 acres yeah. just, yeah. Slightly you know, slight, mm -hmm. just slightly larger just slightly larger so you don't it's not size that that you're going for necessarily in, in these newer zoos around the country it's education and education and, and quality and quality of life and experience uh, one of the things when we were doing a, a master plan in niagara falls for our redevelopment there and one of the popular uh, ideas that kept coming up time and time again is ecotourism, uh, you know, environmental, uh, just nature and just the general experience mm -hmm. of of uh, of being outdoors and in and, and nature. And I think that's a big plus that the North American Zoo will have. Right. And, and I think one of the things I think I remember somebody saying was that you would walk over different surfaces. So maybe mm -hmm. one time you'll be elevated on a wooden plank and other times you'll be on gravel chips or something yes. to, to kind of more feel more a part of that exhibit. Um, before we go any further, let's find out where somebody can get this brochure. How do they write for more information? Uh, where would they get a copy of this to find out more? Well, we, we do have a address they can write to uh, at the Oppenheim Zoological Society of Western New York. Uh, use our post office box. It's LPO Box 219, Niagara Falls, New York, 14304. And not only if they want information but mm -hmm. when you build the physical zoo you'll be able to have sponsorships of various things exactly. but you can probably do that even mm -hmm. with the virtual zoo now or even in the building process mm -hmm. so people can get involved in this process right now I and, imagine and of course the board is also always looking for people yes. who are interested in yes. helping us develop this project people may have areas of expertise that they love to lend a hand right. it is a volunteer board and it's going on every month you meet it's going mm -hmm. on all year you have an annual <coughs> all dinner year long. The zoo is not just summertime or wintertime or dormant ever. No, and, and as uh, folks may not see a lot of construction or actual things on the surface, but there's been a lot done uh, behind, behind the scenes. The scenes. Um, getting the plan for the zoo, the wonderful work that, that uh, the board did on uh, the grant proposals, looking for un other funding sources, looking for board members, uh, uh, just you know, keeping our ducks in a row. We, the last 10 years, we have cut our expenses down to almost nil uh, just to save all funds that we may have available for the actual construction or the further development of the zoo. Right. Let's give the web address and email one more time <coughs> if somebody wants more information. Uh, the website is www.oppenheimzoo.org. <coughs> the email address is info at oppenheimzoo.org. Okay. Connie Lazinski, Darlene O'Callaghan, thank you for coming from the Oppenheim Zoo Thank you. Thank you for board. inviting us. You've been watching Western New York Tonight. My name's Tom Christie. Thanks for watching.